Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about this quantity called delta v or change in velocity. Okay, so delta v is an arrow or a vector that indicates how the velocity arrows are changing. And we know that mathematically delta v, sorry about that, we know that mathematically delta v equals v final minus v initial. And we also know that delta v is a vector and we can represent it as such. So if we think about this example, imagine that we have a few positions here modeled as dots and we have x initial. And I want to make sure that I have the negative direction depicted and the positive direction. Okay. So the next thing I can do here is I can add on my velocity arrows and each of these dots represents the position right at one second intervals so x sub 0 here this is the position at the 0 second clock reading the next dot is the position at the 1 second clock reading and the next dot is the position at the second um, second clock reading so I'm gonna label these v sub 0 and v sub 1 I can tell just from the picture that the speed and the velocity are increasing. So v sub 0 is a smaller velocity vector than v1. So I know that what I've got is a speeding up type motion. In order to think about delta v as a vector here, I want you to ask yourself the question, what do we need to do to get from v sub 0 to v sub 1? Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy each of these vectors. So when I look at v sub 0, it looks to be about this big, and I'm going to label this v sub 0. And right underneath it, I'm going to draw v sub 1. Now I didn't give you numbers for this one, and I did that on purpose because I really want you to think about the vector nature of delta v. Later on, we'll put some numbers on this, and I think that it'll, uh, it'll be really, really easy. But for now, I really want you to think about what we need to do to get from v sub 0 to v1. So if I start with v initial and I look at this vector, I always ask myself a question. Do I need to kind of pull this in the positive direction, stretch it out to make it look like v1? Or starting at v initial, does it need to be squished down, you know, pushed in the negative direction to give me an outcome that looks like v1? Well, when I look at this, I can tell that to go from v initial to v1, I need to stretch it out. I need to stretch it all the way to here. So because it's a stretching motion, I have the direction in the positive direction here, just to the right, and I can label this delta v. So you need to add on, in this case, or stretch v initial to get v1. And this is how I can draw my delta v vector. So I can go right on back to my original picture here, and I can add in that delta v vector, which should be about this big. And I'll label it delta v. Okay, now here we have a second example where we have our x initial set up. And I'm going to draw my first velocity vector here and call it v initial. And I have my second velocity vector here and I call this v1. Notice that v1 is a smaller vector than v initial. So this is some type of slowing down motion. Now I ask myself, what do I need to do to get from v initial to v1? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my v initial. And right underneath that, I'm going to draw my v1. I think, okay. And what I notice right away is that when I think about v initial, what do I need to do to it to get to v1? Well, I'd need to squish this down and make it smaller. So I'd need to start right here where v initial is, and I'd have to push it to the left here, squish it down in order to get v1 as my result. So delta v looks like a vector to the left here. And it's the amount that I would need to take off the initial to give me v1. So I'm going to draw in my delta v on this diagram. Notice in the first example, we had positive velocities and a positive delta v. And that gave us a speeding up motion. 
Now we have positive velocities and a negative delta V, and it gives us a slowing down motion. Let's look at what happens when we have some negative velocities. Okay, here we have our x initial, and we've got our first velocity. I'll label it v sub 0, and here's our second. Whoa, not so straight velocity. Let me give it a shot again here. Okay, and I'll call this one v1. These are negative velocities. They're pointing in the negative direction. How can I model delta v? Well, let me think about what do I need to do to get from v initial to v1. So I'm going to just kind of copy my v initial. Underneath that, I'm going to copy my v1. And I'm going to think about what do I need to do to go from v initial to v1. I would need to start with v initial and pull on him, stretch him out all the way to here so that he can be as big as v1. So I know that my delta v vector is about this large and points to the left. So I'm going to add that to my sketch here. Here's my delta v. Now we have a negative delta v, but the outcome is speeding up. That's interesting because in the last example, our negative delta v had an outcome of slowing down. Something we need to think about here is we're trying to find a pattern between our v's and delta v's. Okay, one more example here. Here I have a negative velocity followed by another negative velocity. And just by the looks of this motion diagram, I have some kind of slowing down motion. So if I want to find delta v, what do I need to do to get from v initial to v1? Well, I've copied v initial, so the same size and direction. And I'm going to take a look at the size of v1 in direction, and I'm going to put that right here. Here's my v1. What do I need to do to v initial to get to v1? Well, if I start at the head here of v initial, you'd have to squish this guy down. So starting here, you'd have to squish him down all the way until you get to v1. So here is my delta v. I'm going to add this delta v to my picture up here. And this is interesting as well because I have these negative velocities, a positive delta v, and the result here is slowing down. So let's see if we can kind of find a pattern from everything we've seen in these examples. Okay, first example here, and for all of these examples, I'm sorry, I have the negative direction as left and the positive as right. So in the first example here, I have v initial and v1. I know that to get from v initial to v1, I have a delta v that looks like this. Okay, next example, I have positive velocity, but now a slower positive velocity. I know that in order to do that, my delta v is to the left. So what I have here, for example number one up here, is I have speeding up. And I notice that I have positive velocities and positive delta v. Next example is slowing down motion. We've got positive velocities and a negative delta v. Let's take a look at some negative velocities. So if I have a first velocity vector and a second, this is slowing down motion. I know that to get from v initial to v1, I had to have this squishing down here. So delta v is positive while the v's are negative. This is slowing down motion. And I have negative velocities, positive delta v. And in the last example here, I have a small negative velocity followed by a greater negative velocity. So, so this represents a speeding up motion. And we've got negative velocities. I'm trying to write this, but it's not letting me. Hang on a sec. Negative velocities and negative delta v. So give yourself a moment and see if you can find a pattern here between slowing down motion and speeding up motion.
When we look at when the object sped up, let's circle both of these, it doesn't matter if the um, delta V is positive or negative. We can have speeding up when delta V is positive. We can have speeding up when delta V is negative. But the real pattern is that the sign of delta V compared to V is the same. And when that happens, we're getting speeding up motion as the result. When we have slowing down motion, the pattern is the sign of V compared to the sign of delta V are opposites. So a lot of people believe that a negative delta V means slowing down, but we've disproven that idea because we have negative delta V here and we also have negative delta V here. And these are opposite situations where one slows down and one speeds up. So just to recap today's pattern in words here, there's a pattern that exists between delta V and V and whether an object is speeding up or slowing down. And we'll talk more about this tomorrow because there's even more possibilities um, when we have delta V and V in certain directions. But for right now, we think about speeding up. This happens when delta V and V vectors are in the same direction. So for example, if the velocities are positive and delta V is positive, you have speeding up. If V is negative and delta V is negative, the object's still speeding up. Slowing down occurs when delta V and V vectors are in opposite directions. So if you have a positive velocity but a negative delta V, the object's slowing down. And if you have a negative velocity and a positive delta V, the object is slowing down. I hope you found this helpful as you develop some new ideas here related to this quantity of delta V. If you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you have a great day.